So in life, we get to play games. We get to play games. And if we imagine business as a game, what's the purpose and the point system? And for decades, we've been playing this game. You could call it game A, where the point system is profit and the purpose is to win by beating the competition. And for decades, we've brought this game around the world, right? And we've focused on growing this game of business, this for-profit game of business, with the assumption that this was the way to grow economy, to, to generate a greater GDP and a greater quality of life for all. And for good reason, right? Because when we grow this traditional for-profit game of business, we generate more resource for nonprofits in the form of donations and for the government in the form of taxes. Now, as the time's gone on, we've realized that in doing this, we've grown the social and environmental challenges faster than nonprofits and governments can provide solutions. And so here we are in a moment when work is the number one cause of stress, and stress is the leading factor in six, five of the six leading causes of death. We have the largest 3,000 corporations in the world contributing over $2.2 trillion a year in environmental damage. We see this profit at all cost mentality running rampant in every sector of the society in most corners of the planet. And here in the US, we have for profit healthcare, for profit colleges, and even for profit prisons. How can we possibly create a world that works for all life when the game that we're playing is only focused on profit? So what do we do about this? Well, in 2016, the United Nations decided to do something about this. Who here has heard of the global goals, right? 17 global goals for sustainable de development. 193 leaders came together to say, we need a new dashboard of success for the planet, not just country-based GDP. And by 2030, the aim is to meet these goals and to end poverty, to eradicate hunger, to fix climate change and inequality. So 193 leaders come together to meet these global goals, to end hunger, to eradicate poverty, to fix inequality and climate change. And studies start to show that the cost to meet these goals is estimated to be $3.9 trillion a year. And out of that $3.9 trillion a year, only 35% of that money has been found. It's really proving that to create a world that works for all life, relying on this traditional three-sector economic model, for-profit plus non-profit plus government, is just simply not enough. It's simply not enough. And so the question is, how do we change the game to produce the types of behaviors and outcomes to create the world that we're all really craving for, that we believe is possible? How do we change the game to create the outcomes and behaviors that we really want? How do we move to game B, a game where the purpose is to collaborate, to contribute, where the point system goes beyond profit to include people on the planet? How do we accelerate this transition from game A to game B? And so in 2009, or two, 2007, I was living in Calgary, Canada, where I grew up. And I got whisked away to this event called Awakening the Dreamer, Changing the Dream by the Pachamama Alliance. Thank you, John Perkins, for fi founding that organization. And I sat through this experience, and I felt the pain of humanity in a way I've never felt it before. I felt 
for the environment and all life on this planet in a way I've never felt before. And I left realizing that as a collective species, we needed to change the dream. And so after that event, I did what I think many do, having a quarter-life crisis. I booked a one-way ticket to the tropics, and I was off, and I was all in. I was all in. And this was the start of a journey, a journey of letting go, a letting go a dream that I was having like most people, a dream of the fancy car and the houses, the stable income, these things that I'd worked so hard to get, to surrender and trust, to commit to being in service to life, to listen to my heart because my heart was telling me it was time to take a stand, that this wasn't right, that I could have a role to play, whatever that role would be, I had a role to play. So it's been nine years since that journey began. And what a journey it is, a journey of trust and service. And it's taken me all over the world. I've got to meet with some of the most incredible visionaries, heart center leaders, people who've been working on this problem a lot longer than I have. And they saw me, and they took me under their wing. And they said, join us. This is the great work. And so I've been asking myself this question. How do we change the game? How do we accelerate the transition from game A to game B? And so in that journey, there's one thing that stuck out for me the most of all the different ideas that were shared. One critical piece of this puzzle. Let me start by showing you this. So who can guess what this is? Any guesses? Nefertiti, keep going. Any guesses? Oh, this, this. This is a symbol of a worldview. A worldview at the time of empires. A time when the dominant worldview was to please the gods. Now, how about this? Any guesses? Yeah, the start of the Ottoman Empire. A time in the rise of nations when the dominant worldview was to conquer more land, rise in power power of nations, a dominant worldview that persisted for many, many decades. Now, how about, how about this? What is this? What is this? It's money, but come on, what really is this? A worldview. All right, somebody's listening. Great. It is, it represents a worldview, a game that we've been playing in this moment in history, right? The symbol of success, a game to amass this so you can master sensory pleasure and control your conditions, right? And we all know, people in this room, that there's limits to this worldview, there's limits to this game. And if there's one thing I've learned on this journey is that these worldviews can change. They can transform. Into something totally new. Even if you're not so good at magic tricks. <laughs> so, step one, step one. Step one is changing the dream. Changing the dream, changing the worldview. Step one, before you can even change the game. And here we all are, gathered here, as the visionaries, the mavericks, the game changers, who are recognizing the limits of a worldview. And we're stepping beyond this worldview and beginning to see the world from a new perspective. Transcending and including what was, 
into something new. Now, one thing to note, as you probably all experienced in the traditional world of business, is when you have a shift in perspective, a shift in worldview, sometimes that can feel very limiting because you're still within the structures of the current system, right? Who's felt that working at a traditional company? You might feel trapped or the machine itself is making decisions out of fear while you want to choose love yourself. However, what's been happening over this last decade, what we're all here today to discuss, is how we build a new game, how we take this worldview, this new dream of success, and begin building the structures, the models of business, the best practices for an economy based in love. And we've seen this rapidly unfolding. It goes by many different names. You could call it social entrepreneurship. You could call it B Corp or conscious capitalism or blended value organizations or for benefit. There's, there's no limit to what people have tried to call this monumental movement in business to change the game, to redefine success from a purpose of maximizing profit to a purpose of maximizing your contribution to society. Where the point system is a triple bottom line. And so the question is, how do we unite as the game changers to come together in a way like never before to build game B, this new model of business one that's based in love, one that calls us to serve, one that allows us to feel our heart and lead with empathy, one that incentivizes us to connect human to human versus transaction to transaction. This is the great work of our time, to be able to live in a moment where we're going through one of these age transitions. Historians talk about these transitions as the epochs of civilization. Arguably, we've had four great epochs of civilization. And all signs show that we're at another one of those times, of time of transition. So I call on all of you, the game changers that you are, to unite, to come together and play the new game. So, I've been at this for about nine years, asking this question of how do we change the game and how do we unite the game changers to do it? And I still have a lot of questions and not many answers, but I do have a few ideas and a few ideas that I need your help with. And so I've been building a platform, gamechangers.co, a way to bring the game changers together. It's a platform that allows you to access the best training in the world to help you change your dream. The training of the Pachamama Alliance, organizations like Start With Why, where you can discover what your heart's calling for, what your why is, and how to stay empowered despite circumstance on that journey. It's also built to train you in the best practices of how to build a business based in love where you can learn from the world's top four benefit organizations on the practices they use to treat their employers, their employees, their, their customers, and the environment with care. It's got an assessment built in so that you can quickly understand where your business sits in this game. Where are you here from, from game A to game B? What are the practices you're excelling in, and where could you do better? So your employees can quickly get a sense of where you're at. It's, it's, it's also built to help people quickly share the best practices from their organization of how they care. So you're walking through your office, you want to quickly snap a video or a photo to share with other game changers around the world what you're doing to care for people on the planet through business. And the whole thing's built as a game itself. And so by doing this, by going through courses, by going, taking actions to commit to helping change the game, you earn points points that are redeemable for merchandise at your favorite for benefit purpose driven brands whether you want to redeem those yourself or take it as an act of love to give those to somebody in need or somebody you care about now this has been a journey to build this figuring out 
even just how to define what one of these companies are has been a massive journey. And so I call on your help. And Kim Harrison and I are going to be doing a workshop this afternoon on exploring both this platform, but also an analog way of coming together, how we unite the game changers and reduce those rate limiters that are slowing down unnecessarily this transition from game A to game B. And so I invite you to join us. I invite you to stay connected afterwards. We're in early alpha of the launch of this thing, and it's going to take the early adopters, people like you that really get love as the foundation, to make it work, to bring it into your organizations, and help build it into something that is truly game changing. So thank you, and cheers to changing the game. <laughs>